Hi, this is Aaron Ross of Digital Arts Guild, and I'm here to show you what I know about Adobe Camera Raw to get better results from your photographs. And here is an example. We have a straight JPEG image that came directly out of my D5000 Nikon camera. And next to it, we have a version that I have taken through the workflow that I'll be showing you in this tutorial. So here we go, direct before and after. I'll press a tab key in Photoshop so that we can just focus on the imagery rather than the interface. Here we go, before and after. So quite a dramatic difference, not a substantial time investment. It only takes a few minutes to adjust each photograph to get the substantially better results. So the prerequisite for all of this is that you have a decent camera that allows you to save not just a JPEG image, but also a camera raw file. This is the raw data coming off the sensor, and it carries much more information than a standard JPEG has, and that's what gives you the ability to get these stunning results. So you've got to have a camera that allows you to export to a raw file, and in my case, since I'm using a Nikon camera, it's called an NEF, or Nikon Electronic Format File. And different manufacturers may have different file format names, but the concept is the same. We're taking the raw sensor data. So within Photoshop, you've got a plugin, which is the Camera Raw plugin, that allows you to import these raw files. And that Camera Raw plugin is updated separately from Photoshop, so make sure you've always got the latest version of Camera Raw. So with that bit of backstory told, I want to now explain to you a little bit about Photoshop's color settings, because that's critical in this process. If your color settings aren't set correctly, you may suddenly get random shifts in color, and this is not a good thing. So let's get a handle on color settings in Photoshop. I'll close that finished TIFF document and I'll press the tab key once again to go back to the Photoshop interface. And I want to go into the edit menu to the color settings and show you what color settings you should have in order to do this. This is basically determining the inner workings of Photoshop, what it's going to do when it sees a color profile attached to an image. And these are the settings that we want in this case. Uh, sRGB as the working space and then color management to preserve the embedded profiles and optionally we can be warned when there's a mismatch between the current color space and the color space embedded in the file. That's important because we need to control when in the workflow the color space conversion happens. We don't want it to happen unexpectedly. Okay. Also down at the bottom left in each document, you can choose to view different things, different information. Let's put the document profile there so we'll see what that is. So now we've got our color settings sorted out, ready to open up our NEF document. So it might be called a raw file. In my case, it's called an NEF. I'll go to File Open. Here it is. This is the Waldorf Hilton in London, England. And you can see, even with just the default settings, before I've done anything to it, it already looks substantially better than the JPEG. The color in the sky is much richer. The color in the flag is much richer. We're getting much more uh, richness in the shadows, too. We're seeing a color there where this is just kind of gray and blah. You'll see the camera raw is a separate window. I'm going to maximize that because I have limited real estate, so I've got a full screen button here. And you'll see there are some tools up here. We won't really be using many of these. We'll just use spot removal. Here it is, uh, spot removal. Get rid of that little blip there. Can increase the radius. And done. Back to my zoom tool. So I've taken that little spot away. That was easy. What you see here are the settings that are sort of recommended for the camera. And we don't have to keep these. In fact, I'm going to neutralize them and start from a blank slate. But these are sort of the recommended settings. And it's not a bad jumping off point, but I think we can do better. I prefer to use curves rather than these brightness and contrast controls. So that's the workflow I'm going to lead you through. We do want to zero out all this stuff. I mean, there's a fair number of pages here. 
we need to go through several of these and sort of turn everything off and start from neutral. On the basic page, I'll set the brightness to zero and the contrast to zero and all else zero. I'll go into the tone curve section and it's kind of hiding but in this point tab you'll see there's already an adjustment curve in effect and it's already sort of there even though you know we didn't ask for it it's just there so I'm gonna just reset that by choosing linear here going through the rest of these detail sharpening and noise reduction are also on by default so I'll turn those off no sharpening and no noise reduction and I think that's all that we care about right now the rest of these are turned off you'll notice in the camera section it's saying the camera profile is Adobe standard and you'll notice down here we're working in the Adobe RGB color space which is different from the sRGB color space okay so we've got a neutral profile here now so I'll go into presets and click here to save the settings all settings save and I'll just save that into the same directory as the rest of this project and I'll call this one neutral so I can always recall that if needed by going into the load settings now the amazing thing that we can do about NEF or raw files is that we can change the exposure after it's been shot so this slider here lets me open the iris as it were or close it down and you can see the corresponding change in brightness tones in the histogram here so the histogram is showing us how many pixels of a certain color are in the image we have on the left side of the histogram dark pixels or less intense pixels and on the right brighter pixels or more intense pixels we also see it broken down by red green and blue so amazingly I can change the exposure after the fact I want to make sure I don't open the iris up too much because I'll get clipping here my whites will get clipped off or that detail will be lost and I'll get an indicator here to tell me if I'm clipping and if you look in the image it's clipping here we're losing information in these extreme highlights here so I don't want to go up quite that much cool and I can also play around with some of this other stuff if I want to this is crushing my whites to sort of compress them down or I can add fill or whatever but I prefer to do the rest of this from the curves so I'll set a baseline exposure so that I'm pretty much using up the full bandwidth of the histogram and then I'll directly go to the tone curve and go to the point tab and once again this is a histogram and we've got black down here in the lower left and white in the upper right and so now I can start to build a curve that gives me a more interesting or aesthetic property it was actually quite easy for me I practiced this before so I'm making it look easy for you after only a few mouse clicks there I've actually got something fairly decent I want to make sure I don't clip at the bottom or the top here so I might want to play around with this I might want to go back to my exposure and give it a little bit of fill maybe to compensate for that basically I've played around with that curve and I've got an artistic look that I enjoy and that I like might want to do a little bit of sharpening on it in order to see the sharpening I'll need to go into 100% view here holding down the space bar so I can sort of move around so sharpening is turned off right now I could turn that up if I turn it up all the way you can see that there's a really extreme effect there if I even go in closer 200 percent that's way too much sharpening so you don't want to take it up that far maybe between 20 and 50 and we've also got noise reduction here again we want to keep that in sort of a conservative range not very much so that now it's not quite so blah and you can see the difference in your changes if you click here so when I click this on and off I'll see the most recent changes so this is just the sharpening here I'll turn this way up again so you can see that when I turn these on and off okay so something back in the realm of about 50 maybe 
You'll also see there's a little bit of chromatic aberration or this funny halo effect here. The lens is not doing so great of a job here on the edge of the frame here and we're getting color sort of bleeding. So I can go into lens correction, fix that, turn lens corrections on. I don't really care that much about distortion. That's the pincushion or barrel distortion. I actually don't want to correct for that. I'll turn that off. And vignetting is the tendency of the image to be darker near the edges of the frame. I'm going to turn that off as well. And just the chromatic aberration. And I'll turn preview on and off so we can see the difference there. So you're seeing there's a green halo here when I turn the preview off. And when I turn it back on again, those weird chromatic aberration halos go away. All right, so now basically we've got a good result here. And if we wanted to, we could save another preset, but we don't have to because that happens automatically. So if I either click Open Image or Done, then Photoshop will save out a file, which is called an XMP file. And within that file, it will store information about all of these settings we've played around with here. And that file will always be reread and applied automatically if that XMP file is in the same directory as your raw file. So that happens now whether I click Done or Open. If I click Done, it'll close this window and just save the XMP data. If I click Open Image, it'll save the XMP data and open it in Photoshop. And because we enabled warnings earlier, it's asking us what do we want to do because there's a mismatch between our working space and the document profile. We want to use the embedded profile and don't convert it right now. And we can then, in a second step, go in Edit, Convert to Profile. I recommend this because that way you make sure you know what you're converting it to. And I want to make sure that it's sRGB. We can turn preview on and off here and see if there's any change. There should not be much change, if any. When we click OK, now this is converted to sRGB, and I can save it as either a Photoshop document, or in this case, I'm going to save it as a TIFF. So I've already got in here another one. I'm actually going to save out another version of it. with the ICC profile embedded, sRGB. And I'm just going to turn on compression to make my TIFF file a little bit smaller. And now we're seeing the final output. This one's suitable for printing, but if you want to put it on the web, you probably want to knock down the size. I'll save for web and devices. I'll get a warning because it's a 4K image or a 4,000 pixel image. I'll just click through and say sure, whatever. And I want to choose PNG 24. And I also want to knock the image size down. So I'll just do that. 800 pixels wide. Press the Tab key. And I can sort of see the end result here. Click Save. And I'll just put it wherever it wants to go. In this case, it's in My Documents Photographs. And this is suitable for uploading to Facebook or whatever. So there you have it. We went from blah to yay in just a few minutes with Camera Raw.